Hey everybody and welcome to the... <laughs> and in this one, we're gonna be reviewing the new podium vehicle, the Vapid Peyote. No, wait, that's not right. We're gonna be reviewing the new podium vehicle, the Vapid Peyote Custom. We are gonna be taking a look at its exterior, its interior, the way it customizes, and the way it handles and performs after we fully upgrade it over at Benny's. And of course along the way I'm gonna be making you uncomfortable with my horrible sense of humor. Spank me! With that out of the way, you can see that the Peyote Custom is a coupe, meaning it's two doors, and it can seat only two people. And in case you were wondering, the usual sale price of this vehicle is $620,000 over at Benny's. But I'm gonna talk more numbers as soon as we get to Benny's. For now, let's just admire how interactive the vehicle is. You can open the hood, both doors and the trunk. And I just wanna mention here that just by coincidence, I rewatched the first Austin Powers movie yesterday. So looking at this car, I definitely wanna say, groovy. Hmm, sounded better in my head. Anyway, that's the exterior, and now for the interior. And the interior looks unmistakably like a lowrider, a very custom lowrider. And it sounds like... Uh, a very custom lowrider. Interesting. And before we actually get started on our trek to Benny's, let's get the elephant out of the room. This vehicle is very special because it resembles the Ford Thunderbird. Oh yeah, and it can do that. So, yep, the Peyote Custom is a full-blooded lowrider, hydraulics included. And I gotta say, after playing GT Online for so many years, this is one of the few vehicles in the game that I'm really excited to test out. And speaking of testing, this is the drivetrain wall. Basically, we test to see if this is a real-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, thank god, it's a real-wheel drive vehicle. Can you imagine if Rockstar decided to make this a front-wheel drive car? It'd be sort of like them releasing a towing truck without the ability to tow. I mean, that's stupid, right? Nobody would do that. Oh, wait. They did. And as a matter of fact, I did a review of it, and I'm gonna put a cart with it right here. So, go watch it after you watch this one, I promise you the review is fun. Sort of. But going back to the Peyote Custom, this is a 2020 released vehicle. Which means the customization options should be up there. But more about the customization in a little bit when we get to Benny's. Now I just wanted to go over how this vehicle feels in its stock version. And it feels... Hmm, how can I put this without getting this video demonetized? Ah, thanks emoji. Yeah, it feels like that. A big steaming pile of that. And I promise you, this time I wasn't the problem. I know how to drive. If you've heard the term land yacht before, this is what they were talking about. And that term perfectly explains how this car handles. There's a bit of a delay between when you press the button and when something actually happens on screen. There's a bit of a almost floatiness to the way it handles. And listen, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying you're probably not gonna win any races with this one. Which, considering what type of car it is, groove and all of that, it's probably not the end of the world. The way I currently see it, even after we fully customize and upgrade this one, it's still gonna feel sluggish. But if the stock version is any indicator whatsoever, it's gonna feel awesome. This looks to be an incredible cruiser. And I gotta say, I've been reading your comments for the past several hours, and most people aren't really into this car, which is a shame. Maybe if it transformed into a boat and had a stupid name that nobody could pronounce, you'd be into it then. No, no, wait, I wasn't being negative. Aww, I lost calling again. And after I try to recompose after that devastating loss, it's time to get into Benny's and see what we can customize on this one. Any second now. In hindsight, I probably should have waited a couple of more seconds to announce it. And just like we do with every other vehicle, regardless if it's in Benny's or in Los Santos Customs, the first thing we're gonna be doing after we repair the damage, of course, is maxing out all of its performance options. This way, nothing gets neglected at the end and nothing gets forgotten. Except me. Please like me. And something that I said in the beginning of the video, we're gonna talk numbers when we get to Benny's. And this is the right time to do that. Normally, with literally any other podium vehicle, you get a very small fraction of the sell price if you try to sell it. This one is the only exception to the rule. For some reason, because it's a custom car, Rockstar maybe just forgot that people could sell these. And so, in fact, this week, if you want to make money, you could in fact sell your podium vehicle. And if you do that, you'll make probably about 400,000 since I already have some upgrades into it. But is that gonna be better as opposed to just keeping the car? Well, keep watching the video to find out. Or just, you know, skip to the end. Ah, I got tricked again to tell you when the most interesting part of the video is. And speaking of the video, it's probably good to comment on the things that are actually happening on screen. Now you see a car, now you see a menu, now you see an exhaust. 
I mean, what I meant to say was, look at all the cool exhaust options, guys. And uh, as a matter of fact, nope, I'm not being sarcastic. I really think the exhaust options are cool, especially the side ones. And this being a vehicle released in 2020 in Benny's, of course, is gonna have a lot of customization options. Some of the options I agree with, others are a little bit baffling, but all in all, more options, more better. Clearly, you unlike my English. Spank me! I bet you can't tell I'm on my third coffee for the day, he said as we're coming up to the most exciting customization option. Now, regarding the pump, I can definitely say this one's a scam. And yes, of course, I spend over a quarter million dollars on this. And at the end, you'll see the difference between the original one and the fully upgraded one is so minimal that it's totally not worth it. Which, coincidentally, gives me a nice segue to the next customization options, the interior. I don't know about you guys, but I play the game only in third person view and most of the time with the camera pulled back as far as it can go. So while I appreciate the customization options, the inside customization is really worthless and it's extremely overpriced. So as a sign of protest, I'm not gonna comment on any of the inside customization options, but I'm still gonna show them since this is, you know, a sort of a review video. Ouch. And since we have the car with the top down, those are technically external customization options. And yes, they look stupid. And the stupid continues with the ice customization option. 39,000. Nice. And we're at my favorite customization option of all time, liveries. And to be completely honest with you, the moment I saw this car, I threw up a little bit in my mouth. I hated the livery it had, but it sort of grew on me. Psych. And since we're customizing this vehicle at Benny's, we can not only customize the license plate itself, but also the license plate holder. And to be honest, this is a cool idea, but I'm not sure if it's necessary, especially for almost $10,000. I don't know about you guys, but my TV is 1080p, and I can't really see this when the camera is pulled far back. It's cool to have nice details here and there, but some of these things are a little bit too much, you know? Right, what I meant to say was, awesome, thank you for the customization options. Thank you, may I have another? And this next one is probably the weirdest customization option out there. Since we're dealing with a topless car here, I wasn't expecting the roofs to be so ostentatious. And what's weird is I don't think you can change those. It's either no roof or one of the two striped ones, which is not a good situation. Ooh, and what's this? I can spend 37,000 for literally nothing. Again, guys, I understand customization, but this is worthless. You can't even see it. But something you can see are the rims of this vehicle. And as you know, rims usually make or break a certain car. And this is pretty much the case with the lowrider as well. So in choosing wheels, I really took my time. Ooh, these ones. And the cool thing is that we are at Benny's. So we also have a lot of tire design options. And they range from cool to stupid and back to cool again. And since I already took a peek at the pole to see which color won for this vehicle, I thought that blue would complement it well. Boy, was I wrong. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably new to the channel. Every Tuesday, I ask my subscribers what color do they want me to make the vehicle in the review video on Thursday, basically the one that you're watching right now. And every week we have a different colors, different polls, and it's a lot of fun. Or so I've been told. In any case, this week we had three different colors. Uh, this week we had two different colors. And a sandwich. And apparently you guys dislike brown so much you put the sandwich ahead of it. Which I actually understand. But the color that actually won the poll was Nocturnal Blue, with over 60% of your votes. And thank you to the almost 6,000 of you that voted. You guys are awesome and expect the new poll next Tuesday. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you can see the poll as well. And because I took my sweet time selecting the secondary color and the color of the rims, I just want to skip ahead to where we exit Benny so you can see the final vehicle. Don't judge it too early. Don't judge it too early. There we go. And I don't know about you guys, but I really like how this one turned out. And in case you're curious, the secondary color is Tornado Red, rims are baby blue, and the detail is red on the tires. And here I'm showcasing the $270,000 scam that I was bamboozled into buying. I mean, the awesome airlift system that was half the price it should have cost. But even though I'm harping on the price, this is actually very, very fun. 
This vehicle brings me back to a simpler time, when San Andreas was the king of the open world genre. And uh, after we customized the vehicle and upgraded all of its performance options, is it gonna win any races? Doubtful. Is it the fastest vehicle in the game? No. Is it the fastest vehicle in its category? Definitely not. Is it fun? Oh yeah. It's fun. Are the extra air compressors necessary? No, not really. And as I said near the beginning of the video, I feel that a lot of people are gonna miss out on this just because it doesn't transform into a submarine. And uh, usually I end these videos telling you if the car is worth it to get from the podium or not. And this one is gonna be a little different because you can actually sell this one for a significant price. So it's definitely worth it for you to get from the lucky wheel. But if you ask me, you should get this car and just drive it around, see how much fun it is. The loose steering, coupled with the real wheels constantly losing traction, the bolt-like features of the vehicle make it an excellent driver. I can definitely see myself driving this around. And keep in mind, before doing this commentary, I drove it around for quite a bit, probably around an hour and a half. So I feel confident in what I'm saying, it's a good vehicle. It doesn't need to break any speed records to be one. So to answer the question, this car is totally worth it and you should totally keep it. And uh, with that, I think we are out of things to talk about. Thank you so much to everybody that watched the video, hopefully you were at least a little bit entertained by it. And if that's the case, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more cool content to come in the future. And with all that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Wee! Oh.